Okay, okay, I get it. I'm sorry that I couldn't react to it live like I usually do, but I was kind of busy with other very important things. Also, I think I've had my live streaming fix for about, mm, I don't know, a month. But I will say, as my doorbell rang this morning, it was my landlord here with the new dishwasher because our old one broke, I was up early enough to watch the direct, even though I wasn't streaming it. And oh boy, it was definitely my favorite Nindy direct we've ever had. And I'm ranking it up there with one of the best directs in general we've ever had. I really like the Nindy directs. I personally get really excited for them for a few reasons. The main one being I clearly love indie games. So that game aside of me, is just watching these indie directs getting excited for the next indie game I get to play but that youtuber content creator side of me is looking at it like what games are gonna make my next eShop lists and I get really excited for that too so in general I always love these Nindy directs but never have we had one quite like this again it was just like normal direct standard for me it's one of my favorite directs period it was amazing. And it's in no small part thanks to Nintendo's amazing efforts just on the Switch in general, but definitely the support and love they have shown the indies since the very start of the system. But enough gushing about the console itself, let's dive into this indie direct that I claim is the best one ever. And it started really eerie, almost like Nintendo had found this old footage from the 1950s of this guy teaching you how to drink milk with a face mask, and I had no idea where this was going, until you hear that music kick in, you see those Cuphead characters pop up on the screen and you realize the dream has become a reality. Cuphead is on the Switch. This is something that I thought was never going to happen and I'll be very honest, I was completely wrong. I was adamant this was never going to happen. Why would Xbox give away what is arguably the best exclusive on their console? Costing themselves sales on the Xbox you would imagine. Now that's another reason someone has not to buy an Xbox. But really Recently, it's no secret that Xbox and Microsoft have become best buds and there's even news about Xbox's Game Pass service coming to the Switch. And since then, since whenever that was rumored a few weeks ago, the likelihood of games like Cuphead and Ori and other Xbox games going to the Switch has been way more likely, so it didn't take me nearly as by surprise as it would have done without that rumor, but still, it's very special to see. And I do think there's a joke to be told, some lines to be drawn in regards to the fact that Cuphead is a game about the main character who sells his soul to the devil, it almost seems like Xbox has sold their soul to Nintendo at this point. However, at this point, I do feel like this is a really good move for Microsoft to move towards being more of a gaming service like Steam rather than a dedicated gaming console. And I say that as someone who really does love his Xbox One, truly. Kim and I had a lot of fun playing Cuphead, but we never got to finish it, so this is really cool for us. Now, from this point on, I assume, just like every other indie direct, I was going to see a bunch of games that I didn't really have interest in and then some that I think maybe that would be cool when I get my hands on it, but that didn't actually end up happening as every game, every game looked like something that I would at least want to try, but more than likely love and really enjoy. And the very next one was Overland. I'd never seen this game before, and honestly, I typically don't super enjoy this kind of game specifically, but there's something about this one that has a lot of charm. The art style is gorgeous. The narrative is actually very intriguing, as it's a randomly generated game where you're going across the country trying to survive. And there seems to be a lot of gameplay choice. You don't have to kill every enemy you come across. You get to choose how you survive. And I'm very interested to find out more about this game. My Friend Pedro was a game that I actually saw recently and thought it looked incredible. It reminded me of Max Payne, but in a 2D side-scrolling platformer action-adventure style. And I mean, I think the gameplay here speaks for itself. Triggering that slow-mo with your dual-wield weapons and throwing frying pans to ricochet off the walls and hit your enemies with. Honestly, this game looks like it's going to be the most fun I'll ever have in a game of this genre. Ah, the physics. I just can't wait to mess around with them and see what kind of crazy moves I can pull off. I didn't get much out of Neo Cab other than, again, I really liked the visuals and it reminded me in a way of Snatcher. But as a point-and-click adventure fan, it definitely looks like something that I would enjoy.
enjoy. I just can't tell what's going on with it just yet. Ah, the Red Lantern. Oh my, can we talk about visuals just one more time here? This game reminds me of Firewatch in the sense of a small indie team has come together and created such a gorgeous world. I mean, look at these visuals. It's a style that to me looks timeless. If a AAA studio gave me a game with this visual style, I would still go, yes, great job. This looks great. And it's an indie team. I love that. You can literally see the passion. And then the game itself appears to have a very strong narrative. And I, I really look forward to it. However, however, they did break my heart. And I did not need to see that scene with the bear. I didn't need to see that in the trailer. Because now, as soon as I start playing the game, I'm going to be thinking about that bear. And how and if I can even avoid that bear. Because, oh, that poor pup pup. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> the next game was Darkwood, and this game reminded me a lot of another indie game I just started playing called Ape Out. The gameplay is presented in a very similar way. It's clever, it's top down, but you still can't see all around you. It manages to hide things behind walls really effectively. And while Ape Out is more of a fast paced action game, this one tells the story of a very creepy, Darkwood. It's a much scarier, slower game, which even features mechanics like crafting, making it look very unique. Okay, let's be real here for a second. Katana Zero looks exactly like the kind of game that um a month after it comes out, I'm gonna be making one of my classic I'm addicted to this Switch game video. I, I just, I can already tell. We have some more 2D side-scrolling hack and slash action that even features more of that glorious Max Payne slowing down time technique, as well as a rewind time technique, and being able to Katana to slash bullets back at the enemy's faces. Again, this is the exact fast-paced hack-and-slash style game that I always love, like Dead Cells, for example. Um, so at this point, we're about halfway through the direct, and I've already loved everything I've seen so far, not to mention it was at this point that Tim Schafer popped his beautiful face on that screen, and Double Fine Productions gave us a glimpse at a brand new game. Wow, this Direct was catered for me. Actually, as I was watching this Direct, I started to really think, man, I wish I could present just like one Indie Direct. Wouldn't that be cool if Nintendo randomly announced an Indie Direct and no one said anything and then it started and then that my ugly face was on the screen presenting things the way they were presenting things? I'd probably have to talk a little bit differently, a little bit more professionally. But I think that would be really cool, don't you? I mean, maybe it's just me. Hashtag get wood on any direct, that's all I'm saying. Don't hashtag get beat-em-ups on Nintendo Direct, because then people are just gonna think you want more beat-em-ups, like the genre, like the game. Anyway, again, Double Fine, one of my favorite indie developers, headed by one of my favorite humans of all time, Tim Schafer, introduced us to Rad. And while I don't think I'm gonna love this game nearly as much as I love, well, let's just say Brutal Legend, for example, it does have a ton of kick-butt style in this post apocalyptic world. I didn't, I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Post-apocalyptic world where you seemingly play as this rad dude who can utilize mutations for different effects, combos, and kill an enemy stuff. That's good enough. <laughs> no, but seriously, I am definitely getting this game. I will always support Double Fine in anything they do, and this game looks great. Creature in the Well. And uh, now, I'm not complaining about this whatsoever, trust me, because I loved Hyperlight Drifter. But this game is, is screaming Hyper Light Drifter visuals to me. Even the gameplay looks very similar, other than the fact that it's completely different. Make sense of that. It's inspired by pinball mechanics, and you use your sword to swing and hit the little pinballs flying around the screen to utilize different switches and things and kill things and stuff like that. I haven't played it yet, okay? I'm just guessing. But you do see during this trailer, some of the things he has to try and hit with these pinballs are on timers, so you're more than likely gonna have to develop a lot of skill and finesse when it comes to hitting these balls around. Okay. And this was actually another one of my favorites from the presentation. I mean this wholeheartedly. Blood Roots for an indie beat-em-up game looks insane. The amount of options and weapons and items and combos and ways that you can interact with the environment and how fast all of it just strings together naturally depending on how you want to play this game. I don't even understand what would go into developing the level layouts to give you this much freedom and have so much chaos happening at the same time. Honestly, slow down this gameplay or just look at it frame by frame or, or just watch it through a few times and see how much stuff is going on and also look around at how much other stuff could be going on depending on how you play. And not to mention, just like all the games so far, the visuals are beautiful, but I do also want to point out that visually, every game has looked very different so far. And I think that's something else that helped make this entire Direct feel fresh and exciting. And then we move on to possibly the sleeper hit of the entire Direct, Pine. 
Tell me this game doesn't look like just Breath of the Wild 2 in a way. Not as elaborate, not as intense, nowhere near as awesome, of course, but it looks like a very similar game. Again, a very gorgeous game. And at the start of the event, the guy hosting it even said, other than Zelda and Mario games, there are a load of other worlds waiting to be explored through these indie developers. And I feel like this was possibly the one he had in his mind in particular. I am really excited to explore this world and learn more about it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still loving this direct so far. What about you? guy that hosted the direct yes jeez okay cool cool man settle down then we got a glimpse at super crate box i have never seen this game before and honestly they didn't tell me much about it in this direct and then a game called nuclear throne launched today and i love when they do that there's always one or two games every direct that ends up launching on the day and it's always exciting no matter what it is and uh, i don't know if this game is made by the same people that made enter the gungeon but to me looking at the trailer it looks exactly like enter the gungeon just in a different environment and i'm definitely picking it up after i'm done editing this video enter the gungeon was one of my favorite favorite indie games from last year, by the way, if you forgot. Ultra Bug reminds me of just a ton of games I played when I was a kid, and I'm kind of confused about this, but it seems like some kind of service is tied to it, like a collection of games, and Ultra Bug is one of them, and it seems like maybe they release more as time goes on. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe you guys can let me know down below. I know I'm the guy that really should know that, but I just, I don't, okay? There's, there has been a lot going on lately. I'm doing my best. <laughs> now, to prove to you guys that I'm not just a Nintendo fan, Fanboy, I'm not just obsessed with indies and I'll love anything that the Switch throws at me. The next game, Swin Sanity, I believe it was called. I have zero interest in this one. This was the only one. Just zero. Zero interest. Zero. There's nothing going on in this trailer anyway that tells me that yes, I have to play this game. I might try it, I might play it, and I might be wrong. I'm always the first to admit when I am wrong, especially when I'm playing a really fun game I didn't think was going to be fun. You guys know that. So until I've played it, but right now, this was not for me. I love my community on YouTube so much. What do you think, guy that hosted this direct, who I should probably learn his name? What do you think of my community on YouTube? Love those guys. Ah, I knew you were a good guy. All right, let's keep going. All right, this one was huge. And again, something I didn't expect. I don't know if this was announced, but I had no idea that Blaster Master 2 was coming out until now. And I think this is a really cool slice of history. Obviously, we had the original Blaster Master on NES and it was a really fun game and then when the switch launched we got blaster master remastered on it I think it was also a 3ds game prior to that But it was one of the very first switch games for everyone that was making switch games early on Looking at this guy and they were constantly trying to convince people there were good games on the switch worth buying Blaster master was literally one of the first five games that launched on the switch that were worth buying and because of that fact Obviously the game did really freaking well and now this NES game from way back in the day has a remastered sequel now and Wow, they have done so much work to this game and they have improved it so much You can go to space now travel to other worlds. There's so many new upgrades to you and the ship that you drive Sophia, I believe, yes. Commit to it, Sophia. <laughs> Even with a really cool counter system where if you keep countering at the right time, it seems to do a stupid amount of damage. It just looks like a sequel done right. It's not a sequel I knew I wanted, but I really want it now that it's happening. They have done a fantastic job with this. I cannot wait. Cannot wait? I just realized, by the way, my landlord was here changing a dishwasher. Did I did I mention that? And I was a little distracted near the last half of this event. Available today. I I and it's only 10 bucks. Wow, that's actually really really cool. I'm excited now. Holy crap. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> that that's legitimate joy on my face you see right now by the way. That's that's really cool. I am a massive fan of Stranger Things and I know that's not saying much because who isn't but not like listen to the words I'm saying. I love Stranger Things and I think it's a very brilliant idea that they decided to make a co-op beat 'em up game like something we would have played back in the 80s and 90s as the game to reflect the series. It was just a stroke of genius. And this game does remind me of so many of the beat 'em ups I grew up playing and of course even though I don't talk about them all the time I do love me a great beat-em-up so far in everything I've seen about this game it doesn't look like an over-the-top super exciting I can't wait to play a beat-em-up game and if it wasn't for the fact that it's stranger things I 
probably wouldn't be looking at it nearly as hard as I am right now. However, I feel like it's because they're not wanting to give too much of the game away before you play it, and I'm hoping that's the case. It looks very simple to me in what I've seen so far. I'm hoping it has more depth to it, but visually amazing, and obviously it's Stranger Things, so I am getting it, I am excited, and the announcement that it's coming to Switch, I expected completely, but it's glad to get that confirmation. Can I stop being upside down now? Cool, thanks. <sighs> and then that last announcement, <sighs> Crypt of the Necro dancer I believe it was in my top 10 eShop games from last year as well. If not, it was absolutely a special mention, and it's one of my favorite indie games in general. However, it's not one that I personally see a lot of people talking about. It's one that I have to almost convince some people to play, which always really surprises me because, again, this game is fan freaking tastic. A game where, if you don't know, every move you make, every enemy you kill, everything you do in the game is in rhythm with the soundtrack. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. Brilliant. I can't say that enough. Very, and I mean, I, I thought very underappreciated. Another reason why this next thing surprises me so much, it makes me love Nintendo even more than I already do somehow, if that's possible. We're watching the trailer for what is seemingly to everyone that knows the game and has played the game, a sequel, and it... it it is, in a way, a sequel to Crypt of the Necro Dancer. And as the voiceover is going along and talking through the adventure that's unfolding before your eyes, the soundtrack starts to switch over to a Zelda beat. That traditional Zelda theme, but remixed into the Crypt of Necro Dancer style, and I loved that. That, that, that moment was, oh, oh, that's so great that because it's on Switch, there's going to be what I thought would be Zelda-themed music tracks for the game. So as you play, you can play with Zelda. Like, that would have been so cool, like different Zelda tracks, right? That would have been cool and more than enough. And then Zelda flies onto the screen, Link flies onto the screen, and suddenly the gameplay shifts to essentially Link to the Past, if Link to the Past was backed by an incredible soundtrack, well it was, but an incredible soundtrack that you played the game to. These two universes, these two worlds work together so freaking perfectly, and I can't describe to you if you haven't played the game, how great it would even be to just play the game with Zelda themed tracks, like as a Zelda fan, but to actually get to play a, like a Zelda style Crypt of the Necro Dance so called Cadence of Hyrule, it is a stroke of brilliance and not something that I can, that I, I, that I would have expected Cuphead a year ago. Like, if you put me back a year ago from this timeline and said Cuphead would be on Switch, I would have been like, pff, pff, no. And then if you were like, well, Crypt of the Necro Dancer is going to have a Zelda style game, I would have been like, well, maybe Cuphead's possible. <laughs> and I mean, here we are. And, and it looks incredible like it truly does and Nintendo keeps lending out their franchises and their properties to more developers but usually when they do it it's to big AAA studios that they know that they can trust to do it right and not screw it up they're probably watching over their shoulder the whole time anyway but companies like Ubisoft they don't really do it to indie teams and it's so special it's it's such a an interesting time we're in and I love it like can you imagine being that indie developer that small team and not only making a game like they grew up with games Obviously, they have a passion for games. They made a game that people loved. They got to put it on Nintendo, a system they probably loved when they were like that was probably big enough for them as it was. And then imagine if you were them and you had Nintendo come to you and be like, "But how would you like to do it again and actually use the property of Zelda, put Link and Zelda in your game?" That gives me shivers just thinking about that. And I'm not even them. I don't know what to say other than thanks again to Nintendo for completely knocking it out the park with yet another Nintendo Direct. You never cease to amaze me. Me, and you guys don't cease to amaze me. Thank you for being here, watching this video, and really wanting to hear my opinion on everything Nintendo, even though most of the time I have no idea what I'm talking about. <sighs> Ran out of breath, jeez. <clears throat> Pretend I didn't say that, and if you liked this video or you learned a little something, make sure you have flip all over that subscribe button while you're going down there. Hit the like button, leave a comment, you may as well. I have never felt as motivated on this platform as I do right now, and I'm not going to keep going on about it, but you guys know exactly why. You still stepped up and you showed me something truly amazing and it's just filled me with motivation. I love you. Let's keep slamming these videos out, shall we? Why do you watch me?